Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here, and welcome back to another episode of D&D 5e Character Classes for Absolute Beginners, and today we are covering the Monk. So what does the Monk specialize in? The Monk specializes in unarmed or simple weapon combat, not wearing any armor, just using their fists, their knee, their heads, their elbows, the, anything physical. Uh, think like Shaolin Monk or think Ninja. Um, very light on their feet, extremely light on their feet, nimble. They can move around, they can duck from shadow to shadow, and hit you in the back of the head with a back fist. So if you are a hand-to-hand -hand style fighter and just want to harness the inner what's called Qi or Chi, um, embracing your inner self to unleash a flurry of blows, uh, this would be the class for you. So what are the two attributes you need the absolute highest to be a successful monk? First off, dexterity. As most of your attacks use dexterity thanks to your martial arts skill. And you'll also need some wisdom to cast some of your monk-like spells. Uh, so dex and wisdom are important. Of course, constitution's up there as well. So if you have three rolls... Uh, that are pretty high, dexterity, wisdom, then uh, constitution, because you'll probably be on the front line punching and kicking uh, your enemies, so you might take some damage. More hit points means more damage taken. Speaking of hit points, the monk's hit dice is a d8. So if you boost up your constitution, you may have 10 or 11 or maybe even 12 hit points if you put an 18 in the constitution but you should start around with eight or nine. Uh, hopefully you'll have a positive number in your constitution modifier. You definitely do not want to have less than eight hit points at level one because you are a frontline uh, warrior, punching and kicking dragons right in the face and the snout and going around the backside and kneeing them in the butt. So you're gonna be pretty close to people that can hit pretty hard. So don't skimp out on your constitution, please, whatever you do, because, you know, you have a D8 for your hit die. And you're thinking, well, what is my armor class then? How am I going to defend myself as a monk? And unfortunately, the uh, <laughs> as the story goes, you do not have proficiency in any armor, meaning you take a penalty if you try to wear even a simple padded leather vest. Um, so you will be in a gi or a robe like this Shaolin monk here, or just in your... Uh, Basic street clothes, maybe a mask, but a monk does better when they are unhindered by armor. So you do not have proficiency in any armor. As far as weapon proficiency goes, you you know simple weapons, uh, but primarily uh, you're going to be using your fists. Uh, your unarmed strikes actually do more damage than a weapon would in some cases, although if you got something like a staff and could get some range on an enemy, it might not be bad to keep them at arm's length. But uh, really, unarmed, unarmored is the way the monk rolls. Your saving throws that you are proficient in is your strength and your dexterity. So monks are pretty strong and can uh, avoid getting crushed um, under the weight of something, or they're pretty nimble. Uh, they can move around and, you know, run on walls eventually and do all kinds of cool stuff, avoid traps, dodge, and duck out of the way. They're very light on their feet, and with this dexterity being your highest skill, and plus your proficiency bonus, your dexterity saving throw should be very, very good. For your skills, you can choose to have proficiency in two of the following, athletics, acrobatics, stealth, history, religion and insight so do you want to be a strong powerful monk do you want to be a stealthy uh, jump from the shadows type ninja with maybe some acrobatics to help you uh, vault from wall to wall do you want to be the knowledgeable uh, monk with religion and history knowledge about uh, your culture where you came from where did you study that sort of thing or can you read people uh, can you see if they're really telling you the truth? Uh, with a very high intelligence roll, which that should be, and a very high dex score, uh, these skills will be pretty high uh, right from the get-go. And that proficiency addition, you know, is just extra icing. So at this point, think what kind of monk do I want to be? Am I the stealthy ninja, or am I more of the Shaolin monk who uh, delves in knowledge? It's up to you. The first choice for equipment for a monk, you can choose to either take a short sword or any simple weapon. 
and you think, well, why is the short sword unique? Well, because it is listed as one, a martial weapon, which normal adventurers wouldn't be able to use without military training. Plus it is a finesse weapon, meaning you use your dexterity rather than your strength when you attack and as dexterity should be your highest role. It should be your highest modifier as well, meaning that a short sword dealing 1d6 piercing damage and your attack roll being 1d6 plus your modifier of dexterity means you'll probably hit with it. So not a bad deal, though if you just wanted to use a, a simple weapon, you could do that, some piercing damage, slashing damage with a sickle, you know, just keep it nice and small. You get a Dungeoneer's pack or Explorer's pack, your choice, and every monk gets 20 darts, 1d4 piercing damage. Finesse, so they use your dexterity modifier as well. Uh, they are thrown from a range between 20 and 60 feet. So you can't use the dart sort of as a melee weapon, um, but you could, um, but it's meant to be thrown primarily. So if you are, uh, Attacking from the shadows at a distance, you might be able to throw some darts and be a distraction for your heavy tanks. So pr to protect you from the big bad, since you're not wearing armor, your monk bonus comes with unarmored defense. So beginning at first level, while you're wearing no armor and not wielding a shield, which you should not be, uh, because you are not given any sort of armor and you don't have proficiency in it, so it would be quite crazy to even wear it, but while you're wearing no armor or using a shield, your armor class is 10, plus your dex mod, plus your wisdom mod. So if you had 18, say, in your dexterity or your wisdom, that would be four and four, you would have an armor class of 18, meaning you would be pretty nimble on your feet. An enemy would have to roll an 18 or higher to even hit you. So that is where the monk makes up for not wearing armor is the nimbleness on your feet. And because you're primarily educated in martial arts, you have mastery of combat styles that use unarmed strike and monk weapons, which are short swords and simple melee weapons that do not have a heavy property or two handed. So that is the versatile trade. If we look at something like the, uh, let's see the, b -b -b uh, where's the great ax? Let's see, I think, yeah, here we go. So the great axe, as you can see, is a heavy two-handed. So unfortunately, a monk cannot use a great axe in martial arts. So nice and light. But you gain the following effects while you are unarmed or wielding a monk-only weapon and not wearing armor or a shield. So it's driving home that you do not want to be wearing anything other than your basic clothing and probably using your fists or a staff. So you can use dexterity instead of strength for the attack and damage roll of your unarmed strike and monk weapons. So because these weapons are strength based, usually like this, the, uh, these, some of these simple weapons, like say the, um, the spear or say the sickle would be more of a strength because it's slashing damage. Instead of using your strength modifier, you can use your dexterity modifier, which should be off the chart if that is your highest roll. You can roll a d4 in place of the normal damage of your unarmed strike or monk weapon. This die changes as you gain a uh, fifth level to a d6, 11th level a d8, and 17th level becomes a d10. When you use the attack with an unarmed strike or monk weapon on your turn, you can make one unarmed strike as a bonus action. So if you take the attack action and attack with a quarter, you can make an unarmed strike as a bonus, assuming you haven't already taken a bonus action. So a round would be you use the quarter staff and you bop him over the head and you deal the quarter staff damage plus your dexterity modifier. Then as a bonus action, you just pop them in the back of the head with your fist. So essentially you get two attacks uh, every time, as long as you don't use that bonus action for something else. So whereas a great weapon might be 1d12 and you're thinking, oh, I'm not going to be doing much damage. Keep in mind that you're actually doing two damages uh, per round, both your simple weapon and your fist. So that will cover the monk for first level, but you might be thinking, well, that's not a whole lot to look forward to. 
Uh, starting at second level, you unlock what really makes the monk special, and that is the key. So you are allotted a pool of points to spend that are monk specific, and it gives you things uh, like Flurry of Blows, Patient Defense, Step of the Wind. It allows you to embrace your inner self to uh, do additional actions that are monk specific. So while the monk just has to survive until second level, when they reach second level, they start unlocking their full potential. So if you're looking for player growth, uh, a monk might not be bad because some of the things that monks can do later are pretty extraordinary stuff. Think Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon stuff. So that covers your basic monk. Um, like I said, if you are a fan of unarmed combat, diving and ducking and dodging uh, these attacks, and unleashing your inner self with the power of keys starting at second level, uh, the monk is definitely light on their feet. If you're thinking, I want to be a ninja, I want to be uh, light on my feet, and I want to attack or maybe subdue, with my hands. If you're a hands-on type person, then the monk would be for you. Um, definitely good uh, to balance a party with. Uh, while the fighter would be tanking, a monk could be nimbly jumping from place to place to place and, uh, you know, really letting the blows fly. One additional thing that makes the monk powerful is also at second level when you unlock this key feature, you also increase your speed by 10. So you can move 40 feet so a monk can bounce all around the battlefield uh, fairly quickly, go in, hit their two strikes, pop, pop, and then run away 40 feet and get out of range. So very light on their feet, very lethal when you're bobbing and weaving in and out. They're not there to absorb all the damage, but even if they're on the front line, that bonus of armor class due to the unarmored defense and the martial arts really sets the monk apart as a possible frontline fighter, not because of their hit point total and their ability to take damage, but their ability to dodge damage in the first place. Eventually, the monk can focus on different fighting styles, the open hand, the four elements, and the shadow. They get all kinds of stuff down the road, but that will do it for our level one monk. So if this is exciting to you, um, Awesome, I'm glad you found it informative. The next time we're taking on one of the Paragon uh, classes of Dungeons and Dragons, where you be? The Paladin. So your Paladin will be your Holy Warrior. Um, suited up with heavy armor, massive shield, magic spells, holy radiant damage, the bane of the undead. So if you want to bust in some zombie heads, Stay tuned for the Paladin. That will be uh, in the next episode, but that will do it for me. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. Thank you so much for tuning in. And for our little monk friends here, I will see you in the next D&D for Absolute Beginners video. Take care.